Hello everyone, Anna here. I hope you are doing well. I have joined the glasses gang. For a full five days, I've been wearing glasses for astigmatism, a word I didn't even know what it means before I looked it up in the dictionary, but I have it. Hello, fellow members. Today, though, we aren't going to be talking about vision, but mostly workouts, nutrition, health, both physical and mental health. I'm gonna show you the things I've done and the things I've learned from both mistakes and good things too, in case it helps you as well. It's not just an A to B, hey, here I was, with a bit of extra kilos and then hey now I am more toned. Actually something came up in between the two that was a lot bigger to tackle than I had expected. So we're gonna talk about a lot of things including recovery physiotherapy. Hopefully these tips, these experiences can help you as well in case you are on a similar journey whether injury or just interested in nutrition, workouts, anything I learned from working with a personal trainer, with a physio. I hope that this will be helpful. I hope that I can give you a few tips and advice. Disclaimer, I'm no doctor. Not everything works for everyone. So I'll share with you the things that have helped me, but bear in mind, please, your own medical dietary needs and that we are all different. Also, I mean to put no pressure on anyone. You are great and awesome the way you are. Please be kind to yourself and don't ever, ever, ever approach fitness goals from a place of dislike. Approach it from a place where you just want to get an even better version of yourself because that's what it is all about. Love yourself the way you are and if you can improve further, hey, great for you, but no pressure. Let's get into why I started this whole fitness journey and that goes back to summer 2022 when I finally realized I have gained weight. It was so gradual. I guess I started gaining a bit maybe during the pandemic because I mean, lockdowns. The mental strain, the anxiety and uncertainty of the situation or what's going on in the world. I'm just glad that we came out of it safe and sound and sane and sound hopefully too because it was really hard especially the mental side of things I think for a lot of us if not all of us. So yeah I think we've all been there and for me that mainly meant um, comfort food. I don't think I started gaining immediately because I was also overworking myself a lot. That's all I could do with my time. Obviously, if you have nowhere to go and Gabby and I both took on a lot more work just so that we do something with our time and trying to keep sane. I was developing some really unhealthy habits, sometimes just eating because I was feeling down and other times just not eating for six, seven, eight hours because I was on air for a lot of hours uh, straight and just not caring that I might have skipped lunch and dinner at the same time. Then the world opened up and I think my body was saying yes to let's go eat out as many times as we can because we couldn't see family and friends so of course it felt like this is what we should be doing finally we can meet up that was amazing obviously on an emotional level to finally be able to see your loved ones um but i probably didn't quite take into account that if i'm eating out a lot this is our dinner <laughs> i'm filming how healthy our dinner is or getting takeouts or um when i have a lot of work because i still kept the same workload and i didn't have time to cook i was just eating lots of pre-made microwave food and all the rest not caring about what was really healthy or not at the beginning i was happy to see a bit of an extra weight because I thought I used to be too skinny and I couldn't gain weight as a teenager. I really wanted to but I didn't know how. My metabolism is really fast so even though I was trying to eat more it I didn't see any result. Now I was on the other side of weight goals because suddenly I realized hey I am gaining weight but wait a second this is not going where I would like it to go. Why is it going on my belly? Why do I have now wider arms or my legs are I am not really happy with anymore yeah even though the first few kilos perhaps felt like oh this is a healthy gain a healthier weight but overall they weren't going to the right places i guess you can't just tell fat hey go where i'd like to be more curved <laughs> no it went to all the places where i didn't want to anyway i'm not here to complain about that because finally at the end of summer 22 i realized that i don't really like those uh, extra f fatty parts on me. Unacceptable condition! Unacceptable! And again, it's very personal what you like and what you don't like. And don't ever let others tell you what you should look like. It's whatever suits you, whatever 
feels good for you. I wasn't satisfied with my new body in terms of the extra kilos and I wanted to be fitter. We signed up for a personal trainer. That was the first step of my fitness journey. That was thanks to Kevin mainly because he had been working out already at the time and he wanted to work out now with a coach so that it would be more efficient. I was never a gym person. I used to go to Zumba and yoga classes and I really like those kind of classes, but gym and weights and machines, I a few times visited a gym just to go with Kevin and never really knew what I'm doing. I would just go on the bike or the running machine, but not really knowing what I need to do. So it was pretty intimidating at the start, but I thought if he wants to go to a personal trainer, I may as well try it too. He ended up getting a coach for the two of us, so we would have lessons together. What surprised me the most, that as intimidating as it was to be lifting weights and using all sorts of machinery, I ended up getting hooked into this new way of lifestyle immediately and not for the physical gains. I actually didn't see much of a physical change at the start. You don't just go lean and toned from one session, but I did notice it mentally a lot. It helped so much to go outside and do something, a physical activity, start the day on such a high note, such a healthy note, and then dive into work and the rest of our to-dos. It became a really healthy habit that we would go twice a week, then build the rest of our schedule around it. It was priority now to go to the training, so we couldn't just skip it or not feel like not doing it. We were committed and that commitment and the, the the serotonin boost it gave us really motivated us to keep going. So first and foremost, on a mental and feel better level, it helped so much from the very first session. Then of course, if you start building healthier habits, it will have a positive impact on the rest of your day and the rest of your week too and the rest of your choices for what you prioritize on because I think it was really important to both of us that now we were prioritizing our own physical and mental health and not just have it as a I will do it if I have the time because we never had the time when it was not priority. Then though <laughs> As proud and as happy I was with our fitness journey and I even posted on my 35th birthday about just you know feeling good in my body finally I was like yeah I'm getting there I'm getting stronger here and here something happened a few days later I was experiencing really bad pain in my knee so I went to get it checked and it turned out that uh, the cartilage in my knees were really, really worn down for my age and it needed immediate either surgery or injections. Now, I didn't think I was ready for surgery and I sure hope I don't need it ever. I went with hyaluronic acid and PRP treatment injections and that was supposed to help me almost immediately. The recovery time too, they told me weren't gonna be long, I was gonna be on crutches for a few days and then next week I get another injection, then another few days of crutches, so it was gonna be going back and forth, needing walking aid and then being able to walk more normal again. Something went wrong though, in my right knee and instead of a month of overall recovery time I was on crutches and limping for a good three months oh, nearly yeah. four months there goes my fitness program no honestly even like this I went to the gym I thought as bad as this is that I literally can only walk with crutches I went with my crutches to the gym, to the training with Kevin. I could barely do anything. I was obviously just like sitting on a bench, lifting some weights with my arms or doing very, very light ab or leg exercises with the leg that wasn't treated. But I think it was important that I kept going to keep a healthy habit up and to keep my spirits up because what I feel like is really hard with any kind of injury or recovery that it makes you feel very limited with what you can do with your life with, on that day or for that week or for that month or months or years and it just it just made me feel better that even though I'm doing very little but at least I'm doing something I'm still going out even if it's 
hard to walk, but I'm still leaving the house and I'm still showing up to the trainings. Now, I don't know why this is making me so emotional. I, I don't want to cry. Like, it's no big deal, but it, it, it was painful. It was hard to, to even go to the bathroom <laughs> with the crutches when you have some serious issue in your knee or in your leg or any other part of your body. You know how it is that you cannot use it properly. It was a struggle, but I'm glad that I kept going to the trainings and I started going to physiotherapy, obviously, as soon as I could with the treated legs. Look at that. Double squid. I'm a superhuman now. <laughs> So I had first injections in one of my leg and later injections in my other leg so that I would have at least one usable leg at the time. The right leg just didn't take it very well and it took a lot longer for my right knee to recover, to be able to bend it, to be able to stand on it. It took so much longer than what it should have. I was biking with one leg and then just hanging <laughs> the other leg on the side. Uh, on a safe road though, I didn't go on like busy roads. Don't do that. Just cycling lane in the neighborhood. But yeah, it wasn't very pleasant. What I did learn though, the exercises the physio tells you to do. Do it! Just do it! You gotta do them. But it's really hard to just take time every day to do three, four sessions of this or that exercise. So my tip for anyone recovering of anything, exercise where you're doing something else. I was exercising my legs while I was responding to work math, while I was checking social media, while I was watching an episode of Breaking Bad with Kevin because I'm really late to Breaking Bad and now I'm watching Better Call Saul. It's like I'm like really late. Amazing series, by the way. Connected to something that's enjoyable or at least something that you would do anyway, because work math is not that enjoyable, right? To me, it helped to exercise more than what the physio told me to do because I kept connecting it to other activities and it didn't just feel like, oh, okay, I'm just counting how many times I've lifted my leg up. I was doing a lot more because I was connecting the exercising to normal daily routines. And so whenever I would do this, I would exercise. Whenever I would do that, I would exercise and it just kept being attached to parts of my daily activities. Going this much to the physio and at the same time trainings meant that I had to cut down on my streams. But whenever I did stream, I had exclamation mark move time <laughs> to remind me every hour of the stream that I had to get up. Because I also learned from my physio that sitting for long periods of time, whether it's for posture, whether it's for knee, whether it's for circulation, so many reasons why we shouldn't really be sitting in one spot for hours and hours. So need time. Before we continue with GeoGuessr, we need to do something very important. You guys know this. If you don't, this is because I have amazing physiotherapist, Miguel and Enrique. They look after me so well and they make me stand up every hour of the stream. We're gonna do our hourly stretches or squats. Feel free to stand up and copy me as well because I need to. My physio tells me to, <laughs> so we need to. Not been sitting for hours and hours. Move that knee. <laughs> Move that knee. Let's go everyone. Stretch, stand up, shake it. I'm gonna do my hourly squats. Everything for a strong leggy and not that much back pain, hopefully, <laughs> from sitting all the time. Next coming mark, move time, let's go. <laughs> Now, I haven't been recording for an hour yet, but that's a healthy habit that I have kept on my stream, even though I no longer need walking aid or needing so many physiotherapy sessions. So once my knee recovered and I could finally actually do leg exercises and cardio as well at the gym, we decided to also visit a nutritionist. And that is because Coach Hassus told us that whether it's weight loss, whether it's muscle gain or overall health that your goal is workout wise, what you eat is incredibly important. Up to 65, 70% he's saying is depending on your meals, what you put in as a fuel into the car that is your car being the body, I think. Let's see what I learned at the nutritionist. Pass Anna back to you. And I should probably have a shower. And that's the part that I didn't really know anything about earlier. When we started going originally to the workouts, I went on to eat um, what I would consider healthy, you know, lots of fruits, salad, 
I would eat lots of porridge and hummus and cherry tomatoes, the things I like, but among the categories and among the type of food that is considered healthy. What I didn't know is that my blood sugar levels were like, woo, <laughs> uh, above the roof, because tons of fruits, tons of honey, I would eat everything and anything with honey, including my salads, fruits, honey, and other food sources that naturally contain sugar are needed for the body. But what I didn't take into account is the amount in which I would consume it. So when we went to the nutritionist, those were some of the things I was faced with, that even though I thought I'm eating healthy, all I was eating is carbs and carbs and carbs. Very low fat, almost no protein, because I was pretty much eating vegetarian or pescatarian, depending on the day. I had no idea about those macros. I didn't know how much percentage of carbs or fat or protein you need, because you, you do need fat, by the way, too. I thought that if you want to get lean, you just don't eat fat and that's it. It's not how it works. There's got to be a balance. There's got to be a balance. And we started tracking our food. My fitness pole is great for that. I'm sure there's other applications, but we use my fitness pole and we track what we eat. That was originally to cut some weight. We had a weight goal from the first nutrition session till a month later when we would go back for a checkup. And we managed to hit our weight goals actually pretty easily. Because what I had to realize is that losing that fat wasn't as hard as I expected if you know what is right for you to eat. And that didn't mean that we had to go starving, please don't. Like, please don't. You can lose weight and you can have a healthy diet without being hungry, without feeling like you cannot eat the food that you like. Obviously, if your favorite food is fast food, then maybe don't eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or don't eat it every day. Even on days when we would eat out, when we would have, for instance, this massive cheeseburger with double meat, it was so good. I would just try to balance it out with what else I'm eating during the day. Or if it's a day where we are eating out, having drinks with friends, then maybe I can compensate the next day or two a little bit, not going again no eating or anything along those lines, just simply trying to eat healthier the, the upcoming days or upcoming week. The overall tendency is what matters and not taking every single meal or every single day as a, I have to eat only this amount of calories. Do enjoy life, do see your friends, do eat out because social life is needed for our own mental sake and happiness. But take into account that that will slow down to some extent the progress. Now, it won't slow it down forever if you then stick to your diet on the upcoming days or the next week or during the majority of the months. The balance is what matters depending on what you want to achieve, whether it's weight loss, muscle gain or anything along those lines. Do make sure that you check what is the right balance for you, what percentage of protein, what percentage of fat, what percentage of carbs. What I also like about food tracking is that it not only serves for calories and the macros to keep track of the numbers, but it, it also teaches me about nutrition in general. I know a lot more now about what type of food is high in protein, what type of food is better when it comes to checking on the sugar levels, the sodium, cholesterol, how is it doing in terms of fiber, is it processed or unprocessed food? And you start understanding a lot more what are then the healthier options within the tasty options. Because as I said, you don't need to eat not yummy, bland food to be healthy. There's a lot of tasty, healthy options. I do think that with food tracking, a crash course on nutrition is what it feels like to me. It is worth it. It is worth figuring out what type of food, what type of recipes work for you, because everyone is different. And what I found very interesting during this journey is that even though Kevin and I eat a very different type of meals, very different kinds of food we like, we reach the exact same goals. Simply doing the same thing, tracking food, aiming for a higher percentage of protein, but with very different type of sources of food. And we lost the exact same amount of weight in the exact same amount of weeks. So kudos to food tracking <laughs> and uh, great nutritional advice. And then adapting that advice to your type of meals, what kind of food do you like? Do you eat more veggies, grains, more meat, more plant-based protein? Work your diet around the things that you like, because it should be personalized and it should be delicious. Remember that. 
In terms of food tracking, I do think that the downside is it's time consuming, but the benefit is quite big and you don't have to be tracking food for your whole life. I think especially if you have certain meals that you eat often, you can already save it in the app or on the long run. What I'm hoping is that I'm going to already know a lot better about what type of food I need mostly and the balance between the macros. I think at some point perhaps I'm just going to stop tracking and know by that time hopefully a lot better on what is it that I need in a day to eat healthy and balanced for my current goals and needs in fitness. It's a lot of learning, but in a fun way. It's easier though if you have someone that's doing the same. I cannot emphasize enough how much it helped me that Kevin is doing the same journey as me with the workouts and with the tracking. If you have a gym buddy, if you have someone to go to yoga with, if there's someone else who is interested in nutrition, it can help you so much also on days when you are less motivated. So find a gym buddy, find a workout buddy if you can, or if not, convince someone. They can get healthy and fit together with you. It's easier if there's someone else that has similar interests and you can discuss these topics together because I'm still amazed by some of the things I find like, oh, this food has this much and it's like so high in that. It's a whole world that I didn't know much about. I always thought I know, oh, salad is healthy, um, pizza is not, but in fact, pizza has also good things in it and I eat pizza about once a week, if not twice a week. It's just about the right balance. You don't need to give up on certain type of food, you just need to find the right balance. Balance is the key and not not eating what you want to eat. Speaking of eating what you want to eat, when you eat in restaurants, I do think it's harder to track it. But try to be as honest as you can be and as spot on with finding something similar in fitness pal or any other apps because there already has been a lot of meals added to the app so that makes it easier to look up for instance margarita pizza and try to see which amount of calorie would be roughly the size of pizza you are having so that you can still continue tracking even if only roughly being honest sometimes estimating it more than less especially if you want to lose weight is what i was doing during the weeks that i was on my weight loss goal so be as honest as you can be when you add food to your logging because it's for you and it's for your health just because i could eat more if i add a bit of less amount of this or that to the logging you do it for yourself so there's no there's no one to trick there's no one to fool you can have cheat days of course and you can have days when you don't log i do stop logging sometimes especially if it's a lot of eating out and drinks and and i'm like i don't even know at this point if i have guessed correctly how much uh, soda is in this mojito or sugar know roughly that that day is probably not my best fitness day but social life friends it's important too so don't feel like your fitness journey needs to mean that you can only eat super duper healthy food and you cannot see your friends or hang out with them or engage in social activities. Remember, this in here and in here is just as important, if not more important. Final note for eating out or any big meals. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. Try to avoid eating uh, that much. I think that that's in general, when you're feeling that heavy, it's not a good feeling. So I'm trying to do that myself, not to overeat. But at times when we cannot resist eating this massive meal because it's so delicious and then we feel really heavy, or simply that it was just a bigger meal than a snack, it helps a lot for your digestion and for your body to use some of the carb especially immediately to go for a walk oftentimes when we eat out we go for a walk around the city right after lunch or dinner it's pleasant it's nice and it helps for your digestive system and your fitness goals at the same time so more on walks later because it may be more important than what you think stay tuned for that other than tracking my calories and aiming for a high protein, lower carb diet, I also have been doing intermittent fasting. I used to think that fasting is really difficult because you need to go on for a day or half a day without eating and that sounds terrible. For instance, want to do a 12 hour window, 
and you count eight hours for sleeping, it pretty much just means that when you wake up, you don't eat first thing in the morning. I might have my breakfast an hour into the day and have my last meal about three hours before going to bed. And that part about not eating before going to bed is supposed to help with your sleep as well, to not go to bed with a full tummy. I think it's a very doable thing. Unless obviously if you need to eat for your blood sugar levels, for diabetes or anything else that's health related, this is just in case you're following a similar diet as mine. I no longer feel like I need to eat first thing in the morning. I'm not even hungry first thing in the morning. And when I eat, I can eat whatever I want. I just make smarter choices within the amount of calories and macros I'm aiming for. I can choose a lot of things and I have a better appreciation for food. Now that what matters to me is what it does for my body, what are the benefits, what are the, what are the nutrients in the food I'm consuming and not just that, oh, I feel like eating this or I feel like eating that. I'm following the tracking to see what is it that my body actual needs and what will be useful for my metabolism, for my muscle gain. Well, the tiny muscle gain, I am, uh, I, I, I'm there, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get there. I don't wanna have like super big muscles, but I wanna be stronger than Kevin. <laughs> okay, maybe that's not realistic. Speaking of strength, now with the right nutrition and my leggy being strong again, I went on to train even more. We are going to the personal trainer three times a week. We are doing from cardio to strength workout, Pilates, and even boxing as cardio. Check out how I was on day one and where I am now in present day. I may not be ready for creator clash, but I'm really happy for being able to do those kind of exercises, even intensive training like boxing after uh, having spent so many months on crutches. It feels amazing. <laughs> and I never knew I can punch with strength, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> I can do it now. I'm learning, I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger and anyone can. I'm not making this video to be like, hey, look what I have achieved and I'm so amazing. I'm saying all these things because I think anyone can. If I can do it, after being on crutches and not being able to walk, anyone can. I'm so believing in you. You can do anything you want. You just need the motivation, the right motivation. Remember, the motivation that comes from love and kindness, be kind to yourself. We just wanna be the best version we can of ourselves, whether it's about your mental health, super duper priority important, or physical health, super duper priority important. The way you feel, where you are on a professional level, where you are in life with your friends and family, your loved ones, to be the best we can be for others. But when it comes to mental and physical health, to be the best you can be for yourself. Now, a few more tips in case they help. Again, they are just suggestions. I have a Fitbit helps me to track what I'm doing in terms of the exercises and then I log it into my fitness ball. So on days when I'm doing super high intensity cardio, it tracks it, it adds to my fitness tracker, then it increases the calories accordingly. So on days when I'm working out a lot or on days when we walk a lot, I get to eat even more. <laughs> no, honestly, don't go starve me. No, honestly, the calorie amount is enough. And now I'm in a maintenance phase. I need to actually stop losing weight and maintain my weight and gain muscle instead of losing weight. That's the next bit I'm trying to figure out on what's the right amount of calorie for me to keep the weight and at the same time keep going with protein so that I can get a bit, bit of muscle, <laughs> a bit of muscle in here and in here, you know? Stronger than Kevin. Other than going to the gym or working with a personal trainer, you can do a lot of things for free, including watching training videos on YouTube. There's so many amazing channels, fitness channels that you can follow. I do my yoga sessions from YouTube, Yoga with Adrienne, and then I definitely recommend Jeff Nippert's channel too for all things fitness backed with scientific research and explanations. And the most, most, most useful physical exercise that Kevin and I have discovered, you will not believe it, walking. What? What the fuck? Honestly, for weight loss, 
or just for feeling better, just for your muscles to, to get going and feel good in here as the start as the start of the day or in between two work sessions. It is so damn healthy, in my opinion, to just go out, get some fresh air and walk. Now, if you are not big on walks, music, podcasts, audiobooks can make it so much more enjoyable. For Kevin and me, we usually go out on walks together and a lot of our great ideas for content came from the walks. It's awesome for brainstorming too, or just catching up. So whether you are walking with a friend or loved one or with ear pods, it is, I believe, my number one exercise for getting fitter in all sorts of ways. Can I recommend it enough? I'm walking usually 10K a day minimum. That also, of course, includes walking up and down at home. So if you have a fitness tracker or smartwatch, it will also add up the steps that you take at home. On days when we are out and about for trainings or sightseeing, 17, 18,000 steps at times, and I can still keep going. I'm just so proud of my knees. <laughs> I'm proud that they went from not being able to walk to me going 17, 18,000 steps a day and still feeling great about it. In fact, I feel better about it. Any activity, any physical activity that you can do at home or you just go for a walk, a quick jog, it's gonna have a positive impact in what's in here and how you feel about yourself and about your day. If not for any weight goals, muscle gains or such, I would recommend walking or any other physical activity of your choice that you like. Dancing, just dance. For how much better it can make you feel and if it makes you feel great, it was already worth it and you will do everything better. It's a good investment. Invest in your health. From all sorts of free resources and walking, you can do a big investment in your mental and physical health. Also, on a final but very important note, I wanted to recommend Pokimane's fitness video because honestly, Pocky has inspired me so much. I worked with Pocky during one of the Pokchem series as her coach and I talked to her a little bit about fitness too and she told me she was making this video about her fitness journey then I watched the video itself and there's so much information she put into her video, there's so much thought it shows that she really cares about her viewers making the most out of Pocky's experience so that what she learned she can also forward it, she can also pass it on to her audience and help others achieve their best selves, their best versions. So make sure to check out Pocky's video. I learned a lot from her video, the things that I didn't know and I've added from her journey, including the resources she mentioned, Glucose Goddess, amazing Instagram account, and also just any other tips and advice that she mentions um, that you can use, for instance, the apple vinegar trick. Today we're talking about vinegar. Okay, so the idea behind apple cider vinegar is the acetic acid affects amylase and affects a number of other different processes that slow down how you absorb glucose. So it reduces the glucose spike of your meal. That being said, you have to be careful when you buy vinegar. So this is the kind you're looking for. On the back, it says just apple cider vinegar. These guys, which are sort of like apple cider vinegar drinks, often contain extra sugar or honey. And you can see it here on the ingredients, organic honey. This will actually render the acetic acid, well, render the action of the vinegar on your body a moot, right? Because it's gonna create a glucose spike from your sugar. For me, in terms of supplements, I do have protein shakes and protein bars. I find it really hard to hit a high protein goal with only food but make sure that if you do take dietary supplements it's from a good source and that they are healthy overall not just for one thing but overall they will be helping you on your health and fitness journey remember in healthy body healthy mind and it's gonna make you feel better overall i promise and i also might need to add that you might need a wardrobe change. Not fully though. Luckily belts can help a lot or any bands <laughs> for pants. But yeah, that's the bad and the good. Some of your favorite clothes might not be good, but tailoring can help too. Don't give up on those clothes. Just adjust to your now new, even better self. I know you can do it. I know you will do it if you want to. And if you don't, you're great as you are. You love yourself the way you are and be kind to yourself, always. Thanks so much for listening, and I see you guys in the next video.